into this next All category. right, so yeah, then, yeah. then now this is the monster. The big I mean, boy. This is like the, I don't know, you bought the cheapest Porsche on the lot. Correct. That's that's what this is. Correct. Um, it's definitely one of the premier type of... Uh, Pontiac. Pontiac. <laughs> um, de definitely... Uh, but get you out there, guys. It get does, you it does, it does. I took fantastic planetary work with these uh, ZWO ASI cameras, so not knocking them. It's what I have no. for now until I take the... You know, a step closer to maybe what Dan has. And here. again, I, I have done. I didn't just go out and buy this as my first camera. No, absolutely. Okay, I started with a, a Minolta Maxim. For those of you guys who are as old as I am, wow. that's a thirty-five millimeter film, film camera. Film camera, guys. And actually, film rolls. Yeah, I had to wind it up. Actually, it actually it had an automatic rewind. Ah, so you, yeah, that's really, fun. <laughs> you know, okay with that. So, um, you know, you know, I, what annoyed me about that, and what stopped me from doing actual photography, is that. I spent all night trying to get, and there's no live view. Right, no. You're looking through this little no. viewfinder, whatever, hoping that's in focus. Send it to a developer for a week. You get it back, and what do you get? Nothing. Yeah, I remember you saying you that one of our prior videos, a big white yeah, blob. Yeah, you, you get a big a white, white, yeah, it was nothing. A blob. And, uh, and and I stopped doing digital photography. And once digital age came in, I started doing that. Thank and you, I technology. Started with Thank you, science and technology. I started with a Mi DSi, I think. Okay. Or a Rebel XT. I don't remember which one, but it was one of the older cameras, and, and I, I grew up to this. Um, this is a different monster. I did DSLR, which is... Remember this guy? I did DSLR for many, many years. Correct. And so now I'm dealing with a different monster because it's not. This is a monochrome camera. Okay. Black CCD, and white. right? Totally CCD, charge couple device. Okay. Um, it's a CCD camera. This here, that's your filter wheel. There's an A position filter wheel in there. Right now, there's only four filters in there. There's a, a luminance, a red, blue, and green. Okay. Because you need to take all those different wavelengths and kind of transpose them on top of each other in order to get a color image. Yeah, this takes a little bit more work, guys, but the... Uh, I'm still working on it. <laughs> the effort is well worth it once you guys see the outcome. The final picture is, you know... A lot better. Amazing. A lot yeah, more the sensitive. details, the colors that you can bring out, and, you know, it's just amazing, guys. But, yeah, there's a little more detail and a lot more work. And then this over here... is your off-axis guider. Okay? And that's connected to another camera here... And that's your guide camera. Yeah. Okay? So, so your guide camera, this is a wonderful piece of equipment. This is $75, this red piece right here. $75. And I don't want to touch it because I have it actually set to the right focus. But when you are dealing with focusing your guide camera with an off-axis guider, you can't move your focus tube. Right, that because now that affects your main camera. So um, uh, a guy, this is called the KISS Focuser. Um, and this guy makes him, he's, uh, he's from the Midwest, I believe, $75, he makes it for the S-Big camera and the QHY cameras. Yeah, I believe you were talking about that in a prior video. Yeah, before. and all you do to focus is you move this knurled knob oh, back and forth, and it, it'll move in and out of the tube there. Wow, that's great. And that's that probably the best $75 that I ever spent money on. Because then you guys can basically focus them independently. Exactly. Yeah. So, so it's going to be close. It's going to be close, right? but it's not going to be perfect, and that's why you need a little, see there's a little space here, and that's the space in between. Ah, uh, that gives you the focus. Exactly. So, um, now, when all said and done, and you put either this camera, this camera, this camera, or whatever you want to put in there, you may have an issue. What would that be, Dan? Back focus. Correct, guys. Yeah, he's talking about, yeah, you might not have enough space to get the proper focus you need. So with you your focuses, certain focuses might give you a you know, longer back focus, let's call it, you know, where you can use everything and get it in focus to use. But other than that, you might need adapters and everything to give you the proper back focus. Which brings us to let Dan adapters. Know. I'll let Dan know about <laughs> that. Declination Dan. Okay. So this is an adapter for an ES-127. And I had an issue with the ES-127. And for those of you it's that have scientific 127, guys. Um... I had an issue with this, and there isn't enough back focus. Because, see all this? This is all extension tubes here. All this, it only goes to this ring here. It only goes inside to that ring. This extra two inches here, that's an extension tube. To help them get proper focus. To help me get guys. focused. Okay, so, so I didn't have enough back focus, so I needed to make 
or or get this is actually a part of a um, a, a a camera adapter that oh, okay. I kind of butchered. I think that uh, where is that that nose piece? That, that, oh, it's right here. This nose piece was on this adapter at oh, one wow. point, uh, so I just kind of butchered it a little bit to make it work. And um, it, it goes right into your off-axis guider, and now I have enough back focus. Um, you don't want to add so much on there because that, then you get into tube flexure. Right, exactly. Right. Like right. bends when yeah. you go into a tube. So, you know, the light's going to kind of, the weight that you have on, and then the longer the tube, your telescope may be here, but your camera's going like this. Yeah, the harder And I'm blowing it out of proportion. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but, you know, it, it's going to be an you issue. You definitely, to use any cameras like this, guys, or this size, you definitely want to make sure you have a, a good heavy duty focus there. Yeah. The, the typical focus that might come with the telescope scope that you buy, especially the Explore Scientific it's not 27 uh, telescope that Dan, the Nation Dan has, is not going to hold this. Yeah, so no. Dan, a lot of people upgrade their focuses to a moonlight or a feather touch. Feather touch or yeah, whatever, focus, whatever so guys, it is. Uh, something a little beefy and more substantial than the Crayford focus, you know, the Crayford style focus that comes with the telescope. Yeah, very important. Uh, I would not put this camera on a, the Crayford, you know, style focus that comes on the Explore no. Scientific Scope. No, no, no. I wouldn't all. even dream about it. Talk about flexure, it wouldn't even handle it. Yeah. When, when you're at this point, you're yeah. getting automated focusers exactly. and rotators and stuff like that. That's for another video. Alright, guys, but this is uh, basically how you would, you know, where you would go if you wanted to get started in astrophotography and uh, the basic, you know, couple hundred dollar cameras to the couple thousand dollar cameras that we have here. Uh, you don't need a lot. Like I said, you can just start with this basic ASI one, ZWO camera I showed you. You could even get the one I first had was the uh, ASI 120 that we mentioned earlier. And uh, But that's really all we have for now, guys, as far as getting started with astrophotography. And yeah. Anything else you want to say? No, I'm good. Uh, you know, just remember, just get what, get out there and start even messing around with something like this. Yeah. Or even your iPhone. Yeah. We Oh, yeah. We forgot to mention, guys, iPhone adapters for I the upgrade. You can move it around all different ways, but they make new ones. They, so, Lestron just came out with one that's called, uh, I believe it's called XY Camera Adapter. Okay. And it's got three tilt axes. So, you got this way, you got this way, and you got this way. I have one I couldn't find, but a uh, Ghost Sky uh, iPhone, you know, camera adapter. It's, it's adjustable. Yeah, a couple yeah. axes. And and Orion makes yeah. one that's really good. I mean, there's a bunch of good things out there. So, so. guys, this for a, a twenty twenty five dollar adapter, you can take the iPhone you have in your pocket and put it on your eyepiece and get out there and start shooting the night sky, guys. Yeah, absolutely. But for now, guys, I think that's all we have. We're gonna wrap this up. Yep. Uh, yeah, like and subscribe, guys, on the bottom on YouTube. Uh, Keep liking and, you know, following us on Facebook and YouTube as well. And, uh, like I said, I'm Cosmic Charlie. I'm Declination Dan, guys. And guys, we just want to say keep educating yourself. Keep shooting. And keep... Getting out there. Uh, like I said. <laughs> what are you going to say? Tomorrow? Keep right. having fun, guys. Keep having keep fun. Having that's fun. the whole thing. Yeah, so that's our motto, guys. Keep shooting, keep educating, and keep having fun. Have but, a good day, guys. Yeah, like we said, any questions, comments, guys, on our YouTube page, just, you know, Comment down below. We'll get back to you very quickly. Uh, even on our uh, Facebook page, guys, the Cosmic Charlie and Declination Dan Facebook page. Send us a message, and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. But uh, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll be back when we have more. Thank you. Thank you, guys.